Well, Tyler, we just enjoyed arguably probably the best year the mortgage industry has ever seen, uh, which is 2020. Uh, our company earned $2 billion last year and the industry had a terrific year. And what we're seeing today is overcapacity in the system, in our industry. As interest rates are rising, your origination volumes are lower. So the industry has excess capacity. So everyone is adjusting by fighting for additional market share, and which we've done. So along the way, you have compressed margins. We have increased actually our volume uh, year to day over last year by 110%. And we have increased our market share by well over 50%. So the stronger players are starting to amass market share and start to take this land grab. You know, keep in mind that financial crisis just happened 12, 13 years ago when Countrywide fell and vacated 22% market share. And the top three new lenders today are adding up to about the same market share. So it's still very early in the cycle. But this, uh, this, this happening and this development today in the market where margins are shrinking is well expected and forecasted. Market share up uh, to 3.3% from 2.3% uh, year over year. That's the good news. The bad news is profit margins shrinking. Why are the profit margins down? Is it because of competition? Is it because you're, you're not having as many originations in refinancings as you are on the, on the original purchase side? What is it? This happens every time uh, when origination volumes fall. Because you have lower capacity, the mortgage industry is still heavily inefficient. So there's a lot of labor. And right now you have too many people in the industry because last year we built it up to $4 trillion run rate, which is one of the best years in mortgage lending history. This year's forecasted to be down around $3 trillion. Still a great year, historically speaking, but it's going to be 20 to 30% lower originations than last year. So you have a lot more bodies chasing lower originations, and that puts pressure on margins. So uh, companies are cutting margins to try to amass market share. But the good news is this always happens. It's a temporary event. It's not sustainable. And those companies that amass market share when margins normalize will benefit. So what I'm hearing you say, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth uh, explicitly, what I'm hearing you say is that you're being punished uh, in the stock market uh, for failing to live up to what was by any stretch a truly extraordinary 2020. Do I have you right on that? Well, this is a long game. And certainly over the last couple of quarters, the entire industry has taken a backseat to earnings. But we have to understand that strategy here is going to be very important on the long run. And it's a long game because the total addressable market, Tyler, is $11 trillion. So this is a massive market. Disruption is happening in our marketplace. Barrier to entry is significant. So it's very difficult for new lenders to come up into a scaled and branded position. So we are very confident about the long game. But short term wise, there is competitive pressure. And that's well expected. And uh, we certainly look forward to that challenge. And so, Anthony, part of the way that you are competing is by offering what I understand you're calling the Grand Slam package, a cash rebate of up to $7,000 if I bundle services. Is that something that is attracting uh, some potential clients to your company? That's right. Part of the disruption, Courtney, is the fact that we're finding our customers now very early and the top of their customer buying journey, where before, before the Internet, before digital disruption, a lender really is called into the game after a real estate agent says, hey, I have a buyer, now I need a loan. Where today, because of all the content and all of the wonderful listings that a consumer can see online and through their smartphone, they're contacting a branded company such as Loan Depot well ahead of time. So what this allows us to do is to intercept and to create different adjacent products and services and, al and along that, along the way, we can bundle the service so that a customer no longer has to make eight purchase decisions. I mean, think about it. It's already stressful enough buying and selling a home, but you got to decide on who sells your home, who, who is representing you to buy it, and then you got to pick a lender. And then there's title insurance, closing services, mm -hmm. escrow, homeowner's warranty, homeowner's inspection. I mean, all kinds of stuff. So if you can bundle it under a single branded approach, and by the way, we have the opportunity to make additional revenue. And as a, as a, as a result of that, we're, we're capable of rebating some of that revenue that we earn to our core customer. 
by giving them up to a $7,000 rebate. That makes it just much easier for them and, and also puts them in a position where it makes it a little bit more affordable and they can use that $7,000 for moving costs, et cetera. 